Well, welcome back to Shimplin Park Farm. When we left you last time, we'd had a wet but successful-ish harvest. And on a farm, we're thrown straight into the new growing year in the autumn. We had a heat wave in September after the summer rain. This meant it's been an amazing year for berries. Thinking ahead to next year's sheep crop, Joe and I went shopping. We are looking at some rams that we might buy. Um, so these are New Zealand Suffolk rams. We're looking at crossing some of our Romney ewes with these New Zealand Suffolk rams to improve the conformation of the lambs and hoping that we can achieve a lower finishing weight so the lambs need less grass to fatten. After last year's drought, we are constantly, as is everybody, thinking of ways of producing food in more extreme weather conditions. And for the sheep in the winter, we're already thinking ahead of when it's too cold for the grass to grow. Uh, I'm Sam Duchesne, local farming contractor, and I'm here today baling the lucerne for you guys and your sheep for the winter feed. And how's it going? It's going okay so far, yep. Good Another year good for hay, good year for haylage? It's been a good year, yep, yep, been very good. Um, obviously it's been wet in the spring. Um, haven't had a huge amount of heat, but otherwise the grass is growing really well, so there's plenty of forage about. Just coming to flower, so that's perfect. Kept all its leaf. Stalks are nice, broken up a bit through the mower, so uh, yeah, that wilting nicely. This crop of lucerne's been in about three years. It's about three and a half hectares, and it's given us in excess of 150 bales this year. This is the crop that keeps giving. That's at least double what it would have been if it was straight grass. And we've had some fabulous autumn school visits looking at wheat and how to make flour. In the winter of 2021, we planted three and a half thousand trees in lines in the middle of our fields. Agroforestry, it's called. We'll farm our normal annual crops in rotation between the rows of trees, but we'll be growing a vertical timber crop at the same time. Well, that's the aim. Sam and I have come out here today to have a look before the leaves fall off to try and assess what's dead, what's alive. What are you thinking, Sam? Mixed bag, definitely. Yeah, yeah some things seem to have done kind of well and survive despite the drought and, uh, and everything like that. Um, but others have very much been, been either yeah. hammered by the deer um, or they, they died in that drought year last year. Um, but some of them, despite maybe dying back in that drought, um, they seem to have kind of reshot. Uh, we've seen other stems coming up with the oaks. Um, so it's, you know, yeah. you just have to see how we go. So I think this one is a perfect example where the deer have sat underneath that tree and have literally rolled around, pushed over the cones, nibbled the top off trees coming out the top. So the deer are very, very damaging, but they don't seem to be touching the hazels at all, do they? No. I mean, that, that could basically be living without a guard, quite frankly. And the farm barn got used again and again Writers' workshops, we'll be doing more of these next year. Pasture for Life and the Royal Countryside Fund Farming for the Future programme got started here and our farm cluster group met to discuss large landscape changes. But there was one very special event. A farm team is small and everyone is incredibly integral to the team. So a farm wedding is a very, very exciting event. Hi there, I'm, I'm Rob, Rob Head. I am a celebrant and I'm here today for the wedding and taking the ceremony for two wonderful young people, uh, Connie and Charles. It's so lovely to get to know Charles working on the farm. We, we met kind of just before harvest. Um, so a lot of this has happened between, um, between trips to the fields and ploughing and harvesting and everything. Generously, the entire farm team got to test their limited dancing skills. And of course, it wouldn't be Charles and Connie's wedding without the obligatory rooftop tents out in force. But the partying over, the vital job of the season is to get the sewing or drilling done. But Charles has hopped out of his wedding clothes and is pulling this cultivator in the same field, surprisingly called long piece, with Andrew on his fence tractor. More hands, quicker work.
We sow half our cereals in the autumn, so they get going before the winter, and half in the spring. If we're doing any cultivating, this has to be done first, pulling down, as they call it, and left for a few hours, hopefully in a bit of wind and sun, to dry out a bit, or haze. If it gets a rain once it's pulled down, but before it's sown, it can turn into a bit of a pudding, and then there's no chance of getting on it to plant. So there's an awful lot of watching the weather forecast and constant adjustment of work plans. So in an organic system, when you can't spray off with glyphosate or a Roundup kind of thing, you have to get rid of the weeds manually. They've done this by taking a cultivator through it and bringing the roots up to the surface and letting the sun dry them out. This is a fantasy in yellow. There's still quite a lot of green on here though because it's been a really wet, warm autumn. But they're gonna drill it and then they're gonna go back through with a little cultivator because obviously if you leave lovely damp roots on the surface, they'll just reroot. How are you getting on? Coming to the end of our winter wheat. Uh, just got the last few different varieties to drill and then we're finished. If that's variety. a trial, how do you mark it? Oh, different variety, not, not exactly a different trial, just lots of different varieties in one field. Marking it out with sticks. Nothing like a good stick, Rufus. So how's the drilling going, Sam? Uh, yeah, really well. Last field of winter wheat. Um, so that's, um, yeah, a relief to get that done anyway. And what have the conditions been like this year? Uh, we've had a really good drilling season actually. Um, conditions are perfect, uh, lots of moisture, soil's still very warm. Um, you can see sort of the wheat we've been drilling is kind of up and clear eight days after drilling, which is just phenomenal. Um, because it's been quite a wet year, any specific issues with weeds or green growth uh, in an organic yeah, system? So we, we have got a lot of green, um, a lot of grass weeds this year, that sort of thing. Um, I mean, just looking at around at some of our stubbles, you can see they are greener than we'd like them to be, but, um, you know, there's pros and cons of everything, so. How much does one of those tanks hold? Uh, about two tons, you can see. Does that camera show you what's in the tank? Uh, yeah, I've got a camera for the tank. Uh, I've got a camera for the rear. Uh, and I've also got a camera for the small tank as well, which we're not using at the moment. Wow. How long does it take you to drill an acre? Well, I'm not that old, Alice. I work in hectares. Oh, sorry. <laughs> How long does it take you to drill uh, a hectare? So, average working rate for this is about four hectares an hour. Wow. Um, and a hectare is 2.48 acres. Yeah. Where would you rain? Uh, in about two hours, I think, Alice. It's a bit like harvest. If the rain is coming, our amazing team set their shoulders and work late into the night. No one ever said farming was an easy life. And then the rains came. John, you finished drilling your first wheat and we've now had a biblical amount of rain to wash that in. So what, what next? So we've still got our wheat and beans by crop to drill and um, if we plough in our rotation this is the spot that we plough in because we like to put the beans in later on because they're susceptible to diseases if you put them in too early. Um, and to try and weatherproof the soil we, we, we plough this time. Uh, because even after this huge amount of rain, I'm just looking here to see if we can do something here tomorrow, you can see that actually it's incredibly dry, really, for having nearly 30 millimetres of rain, so over an inch of rain. And so my feeling is that we'll take a cultivator through this once tomorrow to produce a seed bed and um, start getting our wheat and beans in. We decided to have a collaboration with a local forage restaurant and we celebrated our harvest supper together. We've always wanted to do more sharing meals on the farm, eating produce from the farm, 
and this was a very successful trial, so we're planning more of these for next year. For the second year running, the parish churches came together to harvest all our orchard apples. I feel a new tradition is being formed. And the local radio station came to see us on Monday morning after the team's start the week coffee and catch-up right, planning meeting. And for you farmers out there, of course we had to have some new machinery. This is a little direct drill. We'll add this to our armory of equipment that allows us to adjust to the perfect soil conditions. We got some of our wheat and beans in the ground and they started growing. But then came Storm Babette with an unprecedented amount of rain. Our organic lands tend to have a high organic matter, so it absorbs water better than some. This puddle on our neighbour's farm is going to have a serious impact on his crops. And it just kept raining. Storm Babette rather put pay to any drilling, but it did not stop the, an amazing visit from the naturalist and writer Mark Cocker looking at autumn moths and fungi. They sit over their young and vibrate their wings and turn sugar into heat. Again, this was so interesting and fun. We're doing this again next June. We'll put news about this up on our websites shortly. With standing water everywhere, the wheat we've got in the ground is up and away. And looking ahead, we need to ensure we have a good supply of wood chip as the whole farm and barn is heated this way. So we're experimenting with chipping the whole tree, branches and all not just the trunks like we used to. And Joe is still thinking ahead to the winter grazing and is arranging our bales for the most efficient feed regime. Bizarrely, the shadow of last year's drought hangs over in all our thinking and now our fields resemble a socially distanced art installation. So hopefully we won't have to use ring feeders anymore. The idea is one bale gets rolled out and the sheep get moved on every day to make most efficient use of the grass. The rain meant the only thing we could do is some shallow ploughing. We don't do much ploughing, on average once in a rotation of six years, as a soil conditioner and a method of weed control. But the wet year does mean it's an amazing year for fungi in our farm woodlands. As the transition towards regenerative farming gathers pace, wild farm grain have a growers discussion day. They are not organic, but they are working towards growing food that we all need, but with less impact on soil and the ecosystems it supports. Uh, my name is Andy Cato and I'm standing um, just to the left of the remains of your delicious apple cake. What is Wild Farm? Wild Farm is a community, it's a field to plate community that encompasses obviously farmers where it all starts but also millers and bakers and ultimately supermarkets and high street retailers and a collective of people who are getting together to change the food system I guess. And so what I hope is a world of regenerative not just farms but supply chains so where uh, food buyers are empowered and um, the high street is full of affordable food that comes from flourishing ecosystems that's making us all healthy rather than making us all sick. That's where we've got to get to. Hello boys. Oh, they look quite, oh, oh he's a bit feisty. Yeah, So what, what are you doing today? So we're putting um, the rams in with the ewes okay. today. Um, so it's 15th of November um, and that will give us a 10th of April lambing start. Um, right, so a bit, a bit later than normal? A bit later than normal. Um, it should just give us a little bit more grass everywhere um, when the lambs start, start to drop. Um, and that should help with milk yields, colostrum quality. How long will they be in there for? So they'll be in for three cycles um, and it's a 16 day cycle. So how many are going in here? Four in here. 
with how many... Oh! <laughs> Okay, boys. Off you go. Oh my God! Look at the look at the ladies. <laughs> We're sniffing the air. Right, come on, you three. How many rams to how many ewes or lady sheep? Um, up to a hundred ewes per ram. We 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 we're going a bit safer than that. A, because we've got the rams and it seems slightly mad not putting them in. Um, if you put more in and then for some reason one of the rams doesn't, isn't working or doesn't, you know, becomes lame or ill or something like that, um, at least there's extra rams in there to cover the use. Well, certainly not hanging around, is he? And here are the new rams, the New Zealand Suffolks that Joe and I bought earlier. These will be terminal size, which means that the progeny from these will only be for meat production. We won't breed from them. So they're going to pop in with a specific bunch of ewes and see what the difference is. Both in terms of proliferacy, but also to see how small their lambs can be when they're ready. They should fatten quicker and they eat less grass in doing so. Not sure these rams have worked with a dog before. This could be a long process. And they, do they know about electric fencing, these rams? Uh, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not <laughs> sure yet. Ask me, ask me tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay. They should be, I'm hoping that they'll be preoccupied with the ewes that, that they won't that try and they get won't, out. They shouldn't, yeah, they shouldn't push it all. Okay. It, really. Well, let's see. They're not responding very well to the dog They're yet. Not. Steady. It has been so wet. It just rained and rained and rained. Got a hole in my boot. You got a hole in your welly? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so you never finished the drilling? No. Uh, no, it was too wet. It started raining and hasn't really stopped. Obviously, you can't put a thatch on that, otherwise, you'll lose it. So, you, know. you had to abandon the winter drilling or? Yes, the band went to drilling, put it all into a spring crops instead. Um, which means you've got to buy lots of spring seed as well. Right, slightly depressing end to the year? Yes. Well, start of the year. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get better. So while Rufus keeps clearing the flooded puddles, Mark and his wonderful team at Lavin and Butchers are busy sending boxes of our lamb to people for Christmas. We have our annual visitors from Tudor Hall Primary to make natural wreaths from what they can forage on the farm. And we have our farm party, where I was awarded the new prize for the biggest mistake of the year, driving my car into John's new farm truck in the middle of our own farmyard. Thank you so much for watching. And from everyone at Shimpling Park Farm, we wish you a peaceful and hopefully dry Christmas and New Year. And we look forward to seeing you next time when it looks like it's going to be a very busy spring. See you next time.